morning. It's Wednesday morning. It's May the 19th, 2021. I'm Pastor Mike Custer, the pastor at Bible Baptist Church in Grand Forks, North Dakota. And it's a joy to be able to share with you truth from God's word this morning. We're beginning Proverbs chapter 10 in our verse by verse consideration of these truths day by day. And we're going to look at verses one and two this morning. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says this, The Proverbs of Solomon, a wise son, make the glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. And it may seem like there are two different principles that are being presented here, but they kind of all relate to the same thing. And the the chapter begins by saying a wise son maketh a glad father but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother listen to other verses in proverbs that say something very similar to this proverbs chapter 15 verse 20 says a wise son maketh a glad father but a foolish man despiseth his mother proverbs 17 21 says he that begetteth a fool doeth it to his sorrow, and the father of a fool hath no pleasure, hath no joy, 1721 says. And then 1725 says, A foolish son is a grief to his mother and bitterness to her that bear him. And then again in Proverbs 1913, A foolish son is the calamity of his father, and the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping. And so the Bible says much about a wise son versus a foolish son. And what is it that makes the difference in the life of a child? Well, it's typically the parent's involvement in the life of that child. And the Bible teaches us much about how a child can be brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and be brought to the place of being a submissive, obedient mild child, even though that child may have a different type of temperament that causes him or her to be very aggressive, that child can be tamed, and that's the responsibility of the parents. The Bible says this over and over again, and how God rebuked many times godly men because they didn't control their children as they should have, and that is the responsibility of God-fearing parents to bring up their children in the way that they should go so that when they're old, they'll not depart from it. And this is a responsibility the Bible refers to over and over again. And we do have the power, parents do have the power to mold and make the mind, the will, the heart of their child to be submissive and to be humble and be willing to listen to instruction that God gives from his word. And if a child is left to himself, the Bible says he'll bring his father to shame. A child left to himself will naturally be rebellious because his sinful nature naturally draws him that direction. He will naturally be resistant to authority. He'll naturally be proud. He'll naturally be all these things that we know the sin nature produces. And although proper training cannot alter the sin nature, it can be brought into control and into check by godly parenting. Every parent should be conscientious about such things and should really be very alert to indications of self-will in the child and should do all that's possible Uh, humanly possible, and then appeal to God's power for wisdom to know how to bring that willfulness under control. Because a child that grows up and becomes a foolish person will bring shame and will bring uh, regret in the mind of that that parent, heaviness in in the heart of the mother. Verse 2 says, Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. And 
the benefits that a person can gain from a wicked lifestyle may seem like they're very attractive, may seem like they're something that should be sought after, but they'll only tend toward destruction and bitterness in the end. It's the wisdom of God applied in the life that will bring about true joy and peace and contentment and fulfillment in days to come and the blessings of God. And so this is something that we need to be very careful to impress upon the minds, imprint upon the minds of our children, and also remember ourselves. We follow divine wisdom. We follow God's righteousness and his commanded course for people to live, not only to please God, but because it will be a great benefit to us as well. And the treasures of wickedness do not deliver the heart from death, and the treasures of wickedness profit nothing. Ultimately, they will not be helpful. They will not be conducive to joy or fulfillment or real joy or peace in life. Those things come from submitting to the Lord and following his truths and his principles. Make up your mind that's how you're going to live. God bless you today.